The first two seasons of the FIA Formula E Championship saw teams and drivers battle it out on the streets of some of the world's most iconic cities. This new brand of electric racing thrust itself onto the motorsport scene. An exciting venture for seasoned and new fans alike, passions were sparked as Formula E accelerated in global popularity and firmly established itself as the series to be a part of. Great job, team. Flawless job. You know, the first season was the start, second season was the consolidation. This one really is seeing Formula E go to new levels. New, exotic and historic locations, crafting a globe-trotting season three calendar. And to add even more excitement, some of racing's most famous names just couldn't resist the opportunity to become part of the series. It's so professional, this whole championship. We race around the world, look at these amazing venues we get to race at, sticking all the boxes for what a driver dreams of when he's a young kid. Now then, let's get into the best bits of action from season three and straight into the heart of street racing. As Sebastian Buemi looked to continue with his season two championship winning form against the stunning backdrop of the Hong Kong skyline. Hong Kong, the center for business in Asia. Formula E season three. We're here to do business. But who's your money on? We will fight. We will fight on the streets. But who will be the fastest? Am I the good guy? Good guy. Or the bad, bad guy? The hunter. Or the hunted? Will I be the winner? 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 Will I be the champion? Will I be the champion? Will I be the champion? Champion. Again. It's my time. My time. It's my time. It's my time. Can I go racing now? Season one champion Nelson Piquet Jr. started on pole for the next EV Neo team with his teammate Oliver Turvey alongside him. Here we go, five red lights. And when they go off, season three of Formula E will be underway and away we go. Very good solid start from the front row men. Jumping up fast from fifth position, Sebastian Buemi. And look at the blue car of Buemi, still in fifth. Lopez yeah. round the outside, trying the big move. Just take gears on this long corner. It is Nelson Piquet who leads Sandbird up to third. Buemi's blue and black Renault, Edam's car in fourth place. And they've wow. almost all made Thank it through. Sure. That's Ma. We need to change Frank Green. And Heifelt using the power, maximum power, to go by Jose Maria Lopez down the inside. And this is where the experience counts of Nick Heifelt. The cars around you, they have the same energy, OK? Doors He's open. Trying. The two rookies here, side by side. I'll be backing out of this one if I was Rosenquist. Yep. He'll get him in a minute. The 3 4 chicane coming up. And Apt being uh, shown a driver at a uh, damaged car flag, the black and orange disc. While well, Jose Maria Lopez struggling for speed, did that contact with Sam Bird? Yeah, Rosenquist has just passed him. Big move up the inside there. And Degrassi just got the mechanical flag. He's not going to be happy there. Adam Carroll goes through. Well, Degrassi knocked the rear wing off his he's car. He's passed two. Can he get three in one corner? Oh, look at Pretty this. Pretty white here. Yes, he's on the inside line as well. After starting 19th, Degrassi worked his way through the pack. And Prost picks up another spot. He goes by. Mauro Engel, Engel another rookie, and Lopez being shunted left, right and centre. He's like one of our guest drivers in the E-race. <laughs> Everybody's just barging him out of the way. Big Qualifying out of them, PK. Boemi down the inside, turn one. Yeah, door open from Turvey. We need to change for a green. Degrassi is in for a new nose. He needs a safety car now. Are we racing or fast and slow? For me, we should be racing. Let's risk it, let's risk it. Oh, big, big slide, slide from, from Rosenquist. Rosenquist. Did he keep going? No. Oh, the rear wing's gone. PK, the, the leader. is the race leader. He's gone straight down. Sorry, guys, I couldn't avoid that. Is that Sam Bird in the barriers at the no. chicane? No, I think or is that's that Lopez. Lopez. It's Lopez. Remember John eric Van in qualifying when the car was in the barriers? No, but there's a car parked in the barrier exactly. here. Exactly. He's, he's seen it just as he's turned they in. Locked up. Sebastian Buemi. Right behind yeah. Lucas Di the Grassi on Safety car in this lap. Oh, Sam no. Bird can't get gears. Oh, and the race goes away from him. And Buemi is up to second. Frains has got a pit, so Buemi is leading the race. And he goes and into he turn goes. six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good move. Turvey knew it was coming and just gave him enough room to get through without damage. 
And there's your winner. Puemi takes the checkered flag. Bravo, bravo, c'est belle course. Yes! We had a very long stint then, and I had to save a lot of energy. And at the end, I lost all the, the region. Battery overheated massively, so I think one more lap would have been impossible to do. Congratulations to Jean-Paul Drio, to the Renault Edams team, and Sebastian Buemi. So it was Renault Edams, Sebastian Buemi, who started the season with a win. His old rival, Lucas Degrassi, finishing in second after a stunning drive where he sped through the order from 19th to finish second. The biggest margin ever made up in any FE race. Next was yet another first for this series, as Formula E was introduced to the African continent, courtesy of Morocco. To win, you must open your senses. Feel the rhythms. The beat of the city. Master the maze. No one to push. No one to barter. Absorb every sight. The color of the streets. Savor every sound. Feel every step. It was time to spice up Marrakesh as Bremi looked to extend his lead over Degrassi. Rookie Felix Rosenquist took his first Formula E pole position. Sam Bird qualified in second. Sebastian Bremi started in seventh after a five-place grid penalty. Five red lights. And race two is going. It's a great start. It's a stunning start Rackin from Felix start. Rosenquist. He leads Bird in second, little lock up from PK in third place. Daniel, lap three wide there, that's not going to work. This is good, keep going. It is Rose and Chris who leads. Look at Buemi. Yeah, there's a bit of a move looking at Buemi stuck behind Prost. He's going to have a go down the inside into turn seven. And as Lucas setting up now, he's already, he's in that pick, there's a heads up display. But he is setting up a move, trust me, he's just, look at him. And he's going to go a little bit, there you go. Oh, a long Done. way around the outside, but that gives him the inside line under braking. And he's off. Now yep. let's see how quickly he gaps these guys here. Oh, when he's down the inside now, into turn 10, that's a mighty move into the hairpin. That was pretty brave, wasn't it? Here it is, look how far back he is. And okay, you can see Nelson no. lifting and coasting a little bit. Oh no, and he's been caught. There's Nico Pross making that move into one. And it's really hard to defend against that, isn't it? But there's such a big bump as well on the inside that it's really hard to make that move. Down okay. the inside. <laughs> <laughs> he in a hurry, did he not? Oh, is he giving a little nudge there? Oh, Degrassi, there we go, turn eight. Big move, there we go. Look from how far back he came there. Carry on, Jeff, you're doing a good job. Let's have a look here. Yeah, Set him up really well, the old crossover. This is Oliver Turvey in front. He's going to come down into the turn. Where is he going down in four? Breaking. Nice. Look at that. Turn well, he's seven. got by. He's got by Bird on the way into the pits. Yep. Now, th that happened in turn 11 there. What yeah. happened? Just got by Bird as Bird probably had to really coast in because he has. He was down to 0%. percent Yes. <laughs> come on. Drive through penalty. Jean Eric Verne speeding in pit lane. You see it there. At the bottom of the screen. What a disaster, race. What a disaster. Okay, it's Daniel ahead. The head of Daniel is Prost. Degrassi throws it up the inside into three. Could the new hotshot rookie, Felix Rosenquist, hold off the reigning champion? Buemi is coming from behind. It's coming quite quickly. A month ago, Hong Kong was Buemi's seventh win. This is Rosenquist's <laughs> second race in Formula E, and Buemi goes around the outside. Right. Nothing he could do there. Poor old Felix is in a bit of energy trouble here. Well done, good job. Two laps to go, two laps to go. Oh, look at that lock in those front. You need to help okay. me a little bit okay. more right now. I'm starting to be a little bit right now. Checkered flag awaits victory in Marrakesh. The first race winner in Africa is Sebastian Buemi. Two for two to start the season. Merci beaucoup, les mecs. La voiture était incroyable. The car was good, I couldn't really show it in the first in, but then the second in when I had the, the different strategy to, uh, to Felix, so uh, I could really make the gap. Sebastian Buemi from the Renault Edams team, our Marrakesh E-Prix winner. Another strong performance from the Renault drivers in first and fourth position reaffirmed the team as the force to be reckoned with.
Felix Rosenquist took his first Formula E podium and Lucas Degrassi's impressive drive saw him scale seven places up the grid to keep him second in the standings. The race for the championship had begun. Formula E didn't just push the boundaries on track, but also on an Arctic ice cap. With the Earth experiencing the warmest years on record, the amount of sea ice breaking away from the Arctic had reached alarming new levels. To raise awareness of this crucial and pressing issue, Formula E's zero emission race car was driven on an ice cap in Greenland by Lucas Degrassi. Just an amazing experience. I never thought on my wildest dreams that I could be able to drive a race car on the ice cap. It's the first time in my life I see icebergs, and actually I'm seeing them melting. And seeing them like this just reinforces what we're doing, promoting sustainability, and in our case, promoting electric cars is the right thing to do. A special documentary looking at every aspect of how the event was put together was created and premiered at COP22 Climate Change Summit in front of the eyes of green technology supporters like Leonardo DiCaprio and Barack Obama. The exhibition is a continuation of Formula E's commitment to showcasing how electric car technology is a key part of a more sustainable future and can play a vital role in tackling climate change. Welcome back to the Formula E Season 3 Review Show, where we'll be bringing you up to speed on our own brand of electric street racing, as well as dropping in on some racing legends and going for a spin with the Hollywood Elite. It's good fun. Nice just to be out there on my own and kind of cruise around. Round three saw Formula E return to Buenos Aires, a staple in the calendar, famous for its stake, tango and passion, not least for its love of electric street racing. It may have been DS Virgin Racing's Jose Maria Lopez's homecoming, but instead a Brazilian was enjoying success in South America as Lucas Degrassi started on pole. He'd need to keep this up if he wanted to close the 22 point gap on Sebastian Buemi. And we go green in Buenos Aires. Who's going to get a good start? Buemi's got away pretty decently. So was the pole man, Degrassi, on the run down towards the first corner. Degrassi covers the inside line. Can Buemi outbreak jean eric Verne into turn one? I don't think he can. Verne's going to hold that inside line. Then it's the two next EV cars. A little bit of rubbing further back, but nothing too dramatic. But Lucas Degrassi it is who has held the lead. But there's one at the back. Here comes Mitch Evans on the attack, going up the inside of D'Ambrosio, locks up both <laughs> tyres. The Jaguar, get out of the way! D'Ambrosio's going to fight back, side by side through turn three. D'Ambrosio knows he had to get out of that one, and that could put him under pressure <laughs> yeah. from uh, Maro Engel behind as well. Yeah. Sorry, Stefan Sarazan, Sarazan who's trying to go around the outside of turn three. And there goes Verne into the lead of the race! Jean-Eric <laughs> Verne for Tachita goes past Lucas Degrassi and is now in front, and that means it's Poemi and Degrassi, the two old rivals, nose to tail in second and third, so Jean-Eric Verne takes the lead for Tachita. This is where Jean-Eric Verne is at his best. Let's see if he can set sail a little bit. His weak spot has always been energy and management. And here comes though. Buemi as well. Sebastian Buemi up into second place. Degrassi is second in the championship. Buemi is first, and now Buemi has overtaken him. He's thinking about it. He's going for it. And Sebastian Buemi takes the lead in Argentina. Easy as you like, up the inside. Got the job done on the brakes, and the championship leader's back in front. I have to say, Jack, that caught me by surprise. I thought Jean-Eric Byrne was going to put up a much bigger fight there. But look at Oliver Turvey. He's setting up Lucas Degrassi for turn four. This next corner, yep, pulled out. Here he comes then, up the inside, and he gets it job done Jack, on the brakes. Degrassi's in trouble here. Here comes Nico Prost up the inside into turn four, and he's got the job done on the brakes. I'll Turns just shut it up in. about his aggression then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he goes through, a round of applause from Jean-Paul Drio. As we come down the start, finish straight, they are nose to tail. Degrassi has the fan boost. Is he going to utilise it coming down to turn one? He looks up the inside, gets on the brakes. Is he going to be able to overtake Prost? Yes, he is. Congrats, good job, P3. Up the inside, late on the brakes. Is he going to get it done? Yes, he is. Lovely. So that's uh, Lopez up into 13th. It is Listen all over. Listen to the crowd. You might hear the crowd here for turn three. I'm sorry. Okay, good move, good on energy. You can push a bit more. Here he comes. Pechito, as he's known. Look there at that, go. on their feet. 
as he makes up another place. Can you imagine if he was racing for the race green <laughs> and he's having to defend there? Pichito, that was a bit and he's of a trying to go on around Sam. the outside, Stefan Sarazan! Surely not, goodness me! <laughs> that was brave stuff from Sarazan. Da Costa sees his opportunity. Sarazan almost goes back into the back of Lopez. He won in Hong Kong, he won in Marrakesh, and by winning in Argentina, he is the man to take a hat-trick of Formula E wins. That was a clinic on how to do it right there. Yes, yes, yes! Bravo! The race-winning trophy to Sebastian Buemi extends his championship lead. Buenos Aires again provided another piece of Formula E history, as Buemi claimed the first hat-trick of victories for the series to take his points tally to 75 for the season, extending his lead over Degrassi, who sat with 46 points in second place. Round four and a return to the ever-bustling Mexico City. This high-altitude metropolis marks the third waypoint of the season. Season two's visit saw Faraday Future Dragon Racing's Jerome D'Ambrosio enjoy the spoils after Lucas Degrassi's first place finish was stripped from him when his car came in underweight. That was something he was determined to put right. All five lights are on and we go green in Mexico City. Good start from Oliver Turvey. Very good start as well from Jean-Henri Vern. Can he challenge on the run down towards the first corner? Couldn't quite find the inside line and that's going to allow Heidfeld through. Heidfeld's into third place. Are we all going to get through safely further back? Looks as though we are just about. Degrassi does a little bit of grass cutting. Loses out as a result to Nico Prost as he accelerates through this long right-hander. Now we come into turn three. Turvey leading. Second for Lopez. Third for Heidfeld. Fourth for Bern. Fifth for Bern. Sixth for, oh, and there's an accident in there, and that is going to be Maro Engel, who's gone into the back of Lucas Degrassi. Coming in, coming in, coming in. P last at the moment, yeah, they're going to change it. This will feel like Forever. a day. Try to close the gap. He's now rejoined the circuit on the same lap as the cars in front. Oh, but oh, is that Turvey slowing? Is that Oliver Turvey slowing down? It the is. race leader down the start, finish straight. We're on board with Lopez, but Turvey is slowing down. Oh, no. Degrassi's jumped up to 13th. Keep an eye on him and D'Ambrosio as well in 13th and 14th. You can see they've already pitted. Now we're expecting to see the race leader come in, Jose Maria Lopez. I would imagine everybody else too. Lucas Degrassi and Jerome D'Ambrosio sat in first and second after having pitted early. Would they have enough usable energy to finish the race and hold off the trailing pack? You need to tell me what is going on. I thought I was in the lead and I'm not in the lead. Oh, here we go. Look at this, John Fern. Fern Vern up the inside of Lopez. They have a little bit of a rub and Lopez holds on to the place for the moment. Cut the chicane. Don't stay calm, man. stay calm. You've got... 26% more energy than Degrassi and D'Ambrosio. Look, oh, he's lost it! Oh, he's lost oh, it and he's no. gone! Don't talk to me there, man. Come on! Buemi bins it with him! Incredible! J'ai du fou virage de fou! The oh, turn 13 here. Oh, oh, he's, he's made not a mistake. in the wall, in this the wall! It. Not quite! Vern tries to get the inside! D'Ambrosio closed he's the door! Him. But this has to be it now for Jean-Eric Vern. He's up into second place and he has now got to sprint if he wants to take Degrassi and win the Mexico City E Prix. Watch the lap times now, this is it. Oh, three laps to go. And here comes Nico Prost, he hits him. Oh. Round goes Heidfeld, pirouetting in the stadium oh, no. and then a shunt. And the two teammates hit each other. Mitch Evans is caught up in all of that as well. They all get going. That's going to be a safety car. Yes, and that be. could clinch the race for Lucas Degrassi. And here comes Sam Bird now. He's going to go around the outside. Oh, Can he get this one done? Steer. Oh, what a move from Brilliant Sam Bird. Move. Up into third position. Lovely stuff from the Englishman. <laughs> but it's victory for Degrassi in Mexico. Fantastic. Lucas Degrassi, it's Dario in the booth. How did you do that? Uh, it was just a matter of strategy. A lot of energy consumption. So tired mentally. It was so exhausting. It was a, such a good race. Thanks, Dario. What a recovery. Congratulations, my friend. What can you say? It's just spectacular. What a race. What a day for App Schaffler Audi Sport. So that win closes the gap to Buemi to just five points. jean eric Vern finished strongly yet again with a second consecutive P2. For a special event in Season 3, Formula E landed in Vegas for the Visa Vegas E-Race. This huge E-Racing spectacle pitted Formula E drivers against fans and sim racers in a virtual race, in a bid to win a share of the biggest prize in eSports racing history. The event took place at the Consumer Electronics Show, exactly three years after the Formula E car made its public debut in Las Vegas. 
all competitors tested their skills on a specially designed track, incorporating the famous Las Vegas Strip for the opportunity to win a share of $1 million. Professional sim racer Bono Huis of Team Redline was victorious, but a very impressive Felix Rosenquist surprised fans and drivers alike by finishing on the podium, beating a collection of pro sim racers. Glitz, glamour, and the mecca of street racing. It can only be Monaco, the jewel in the French Riviera. Home to one of the most famous and iconic street circuits in the world. History ghosts on every corner. And May 13th saw the long overdue return of Formula E. The perfect host for race five of the season. Buemi sat in pole with Degrassi next to him on the front row. Five lights go on, and we are racing immediately, and a very good start from Degrassi. Tucks right in behind Buemi, he's got to hold off Nelson Piquet. Trouble behind, Piquet locks up behind Degrassi in the second turquoise and black car. Little bumping and boring, somebody's going to lose a wing. There's a bit of virgin bodywork trailing off Sam Bird's rear end, but they're all safely through corner one. Well, everybody thinks the inside line, like PK tried Seven there, as Degrassi gets right underneath Poemi and makes some damage on the back of the Renault Edam's car. Oh, and Bird in the wall, and that's a really big impact into Tabak. Broke, yeah, back end broke away, and it's it's, it's right. serious damage to the right rear corner at the moment. He's going to have to pit. Suspension's broken. Box, 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 box. Yeah, copy that. Really sliding the car around. Well, look at the way that they're using the power on the right-hand side. The brake will come up on the telemetry, 50% battery left. And on the bottom right, regen. As you hit the brakes, it starts to turn the brake. The movement of the car basically drives a, a dynamo, which charges the battery up fractionally. And then you can draw on that as you bring in that boost afterwards. I'm being attacked over here. Copy. Just do your best to maintain that position. Oh, here we go around right the outside. Get it. No, can't get round the outside. Enough. It's unfortunately, if it had gone left there instead of right again, Jeff would have been through. <laughs> They're very, very close. Turn one again. Yeah. He's blocking on the inside, Nelson. Whoa, and, and Van's gonna get him this time. This he's dump. got the overlap. He's got the overlap. He's gonna force the issue. Oh. PK still there. Van oh. Vanish, through. He's gonna go Heidfeld. Oh. And Heidfeld saw that all happen in front of him. What the f is wrong with him? Totally run into me. They don't leave me any room at all. Our championship protagonist once more duking it out here for perhaps the most famous racetrack in single-seater racing. And Degrassi, has oh, he still he's got fan boost to go? How is he going to get by Sebastian Buemi? Has Buemi done enough to keep him bottled up? Two turns to go. Buemi's just got to hug the inside. Degrassi's not Can close enough, answer? is he? Can he get into the line? The sprint to the checkered flag is too short. It is going to be a fourth win of the year for Sebastian Buemi. Four out of five for the Swiss driver. Renault Edams claim victory. Bien joué, c'est super, super course. Lucas Degrassi in second place. There you go, Sebastian Buemi lifts the trophy. The second ever Formula E Monaco E Prix goes as the first did to Sebastian Buemi. And it was the two residents of Monte Carlo, Buemi and Degrassi, who again showed their skill and local street knowledge as their championship duel continued into the second half of the season. In the team's championship, Renault Edams eased away from Ab Schaffler Audi Sport, and another strong performance from Mahindra Racing meant they sat third in the championship. For round six, Formula E rekindled its love with the romance capital of the world, Paris. Just a week after the action in Monaco, rivalries were still heated as the series sped through the heart of the city. Seen as the home turf of the Lido's Renault Edams, Sebastian Bremi took pole. Local favourite Jean-Éric Verne qualified in second. There was more than just points at stake. All five lights are on. And we go green in Paris, and it's a pretty good start from Jean-Éric Verne on the run down towards the first corner. Can he get the inside line? No. Buemi comes across and covers it well. On the outside comes Nick Heidfeld. Here goes Verne around the outside. No. Doesn't quite manage to pull it off. 
Antonio Felix Da Costa close enough for a move. Da Costa covers the inside line. Oh, he's going for around the outside. That's never going to work. And they're both in the wall. Da Costa off. De Grassi off. And that is a disaster for the championship contender. Lucas, do you have damage? Casual kick. Lucas De Grassi and Adam Carroll have both been given a drive through penalty for being under the minimum pit stop time. So Lucas De Grassi's day gets worse and worse. He's going to struggle to score points here. And oh, oh. and off. It's jean Eric Verne from second place is in the wall. It's virtually on our doorstep as he makes this corner, oh. hits the right side wall hard. And that is jean Eric Verne out of his home race and real disappointment for Tachita. So his punch on Brock. I'm so sorry for you. Oh, oh the grass no. is in the wall. It means that he won't be able to set the fastest lap. Well, big lock up on the right front. Wow. Straight to the scene of the accident. That's just summed up his weekend. We'll finish under the safety car. Buemi is celebrating, shaking of hands all around. The first podium for Lopez. There's the chequered flag. It's victory in Paris for Sebastian Buemi, and he extends his championship lead. Yes! Merci, les mecs. It's amazing to be able to achieve pole position and a uh, win, so um, I'm going to celebrate and enjoy it as much as I can. Once again, on top of the top step, with his 11th victory in Formula E, and he is absolutely elated with that, with victory for Renault in Paris. So it was heartbreak for the home favourite Jean-Éric Verne, who failed to finish the race. Sebastian Buemi yet again dominated the track to move his tally to 132 points for the season. Berlin, one of Europe's most iconic cities and one of the world's most important historically. Famous for its embrace of revolutionary ways of thinking and new technologies, there couldn't have been a more fitting setting for races seven and eight of the season. Season three's first double header was staged at the fascinating Tempelhof Airport, forming a circuit very much fit for overtaking purposes. Lucas Degrassi took pole in the ABD team's home race. Jose Maria Lopez was second on the grid. Away they go. Terrible and a very good start, start from, from the second row. Really quick getaway from Felix Rosenquist and then Heidfeld's up in the third. He's trying to defend the two DS Virgin purple cars get together. Oh, he's trying to go past oh, the yes, it's a long, long send down the inside into the hairpin. He telegraphed that way in advance. Oh, 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 big ambition being shown there. Stefan Sarazan. Felix Rosenquist really piling the pressure on Degrassi. He's frozen, Chris, going round. He's done Just it. Goes right, right the by him. Yeah. There you go. He's he like, was yeah. waiting for the cruising coast, and now he's going to hold him up all the way to the pit lane. This is where Daniel App can be a good teammate and make things very <laughs> difficult. When he's going for it. Sending it early, yeah, a just long, him go. long yeah. way up the inside into turn one. I don't think Apt expected him to go inside so early. Yeah, Surely he punk. would. I mean, he just left the door open. And now Buemi can start to make ground, can't he? He's got to push Bird with all he's got. Oh! He likes that move down the inside into the that hairpin. Was a long, long wow. way yeah. back. That was a lunge. Five Time seconds. penalty for jean eric Venn, so he yeah. will go down ahead of Maro Engel Oof. in ninth place. Let's see the unsafe release. They've, so they let him go, and he pulls right out in the path of the Venturi car. That's a joke, this penalty. I don't see anything. The chequered flag awaits, and it is a monumental day for Felix Rosenquist. His first career Formula E win. Golan! We did it, man! Congratulations! It was just such a good race, such under control. Uh, yeah, just unbelievable. Nothing went wrong, just a little lock up in the last hairpin and that's it. I was able to enjoy the whole race, it was just fantastic. Nick Heidfeld finishing in third meant it was Mahindra's first ever double podium. But while Mahindra was celebrating, Remy was disqualified due to his tyres being below regulation pressure. Mahindra, however, continued their momentum into round eight, with Felix Rosenquist taking pole position. Away we go. The Berlin e Prix is underway, and the pole position man, Felix Rosenquist, heads the charge in the red and white Mahindra. Bird and Lopez, twosome again, the purple DS Virgin cars, wheel to wheel. Bird goes long around the outside. <laughs> Lopez is oh, still mates. there, do not! <laughs> 
hit your teammate oh, no. is rule one of racing. <laughs> the golden rule. And Bird's lost a couple of places. Yeah, good move. Good move, Cheetah. Degrassi looks like he's just setting up on Lopez. There we go. There's the pass into turn nine. Lovely. And again, the hairpin there. If you get alongside, it's undefendable. When he's ready to go, he's closest oh! to the oh! The hinges trip over oh, each other. No, exactly what Rosenquist didn't ah. need, but he's still in front of Buemi. Buemi can't <laughs> be released across his bows. Oh. And there's the grassy again. Look how loose it John Eric got. And he's got a bend. Yes. Gets in really deep. What a Ant move. Ant wasn't close enough to do what he wanted to do, which was slip through the open gap as well. Did he push me or was it me? I didn't push. At the TV, he didn't push. Apt's on Team fan out. boost, so yep. guess who he's having a go at? He's going to have a go at Jean Eric Verne right now. There oh, they are. Around the outside, oh, Verne's going to oh, fight oh, it. Contact. Oh. Daniel tried to squeeze him there. That was not the smart move because Jean Eric doesn't have to give you that position. Stay cool, Daniel. We get him anyway. He was struggling in the end. Tell me what do I do to get them back? A 10 second penalty has been awarded to Felix Rosenquist. So Buemi now knows that he is leading this Berlin E-Pri and does not need to pass. Here we go, Lopez is going to have a go right around oh, wow. the outside. Have some and of that. I cannot compete, they are not in the same race. <laughs> the pit stop 10 second penalty means that victory does go to Sebastian Buemi. When I knew that he was going to get the penalty, I tried to leave him a bit of space, you know, to make sure he would, he would finish, uh, you know, 10 seconds ahead of Lucas, because obviously that's uh, the important bit for me. And there is your jubilant winner. Yesterday, no point for Renault Edams and Sebastian Buemi, but the reigning champion is back on the top step of our podium. Berlin provided a weekend of captivating racing. Buemi atoned for his disqualification with that race win. And despite racing with a broken leg, Degrassi managed to close the gap to 32 points as we headed stateside to New York City. Virgin Racing's Alex Lynn, deputising for Jose Maria Lopez, took pole in his first ever Formula E qualifying. So Richard Branson was waiting in the wings as DS Virgin Racing's reserve driver. Lucas Degrassi started down in 10th as he looked to close the gap on the absent Sebastian Buemi, who, like Lopez, had prior commitments. Away we go, great start from Alex Lynn, really electrifying start from Daniel App. Watch for the yellow highlights, he's already down the inside, but Lynn is fighting him up to the apex of the corner. Will they make it round? It is so tight. Sam, Sam Bird, Bird up he's to making third. a move, yeah. And Daniel App takes the lead. Oh. Oh, we've got a move, we've got a yeah. move for taking him. It looks like Nick Heidfeld. A drag race. Yeah. Yeah. And that's John Eric Van and Nick Heidfeld. And there, that's position change. Now, that's exactly what Virgin needed. They needed to be away from Heidfeld and Van to be able to shuffle their drivers yes. without losing but the Martin, places. At this point, we now need to see Sam Bird go. And there's Sam Bird having a look. Oh, oh I don't know well, It didn't take long, did it, for him to have a bit of a lunge. But look at Nick Heidfeld, the red and white car, right behind Alex Lynn. So that lead quintet is still nose to tail. Sam for Bird is very close. Because now Rosenquist... The he's done him. Oh, he's got him. He's got, got him. He's got to get it through the corner, got though. for the lead. Fantastic. Very good. Keep going. Look how close he is coming out of the turn five. Oh, oh. too late to vending. Yeah. yeah. Tactical drift. Down Heidfeld. the inside comes Nick Heidfeld. He takes third away from Alex Lynn. So the Mahindras are marching to the front. The experience of Nick Heidfeld sold him a bit of a dummy there. Yeah. Well, well, the clock pass. is quickly striking midnight for our Cinderella. Alex Lynn, who started on pole, has faded to oh. fourth. And now he's under attack yeah. and will drop to fifth. Ooh. Chopper wow. for Alex what Lynn. What Lock up at the Lynn's, back of the car. Lynn's got a Mechanical, problem. Mechanical, he's out. Drive shaft failed just out of turn six. Such a shame. Rosenquist under real pressure. Degrassi had a really good lunge, Dario. Yeah, he's going to have to... It's a, bit, a very brave move if he does it. He's going to the wrong side because 
Felix Rosenquist is defending. Hear him locking the tires. Oh, oh he's oh, so oh, round he goes. Through goes Degrassi. Oh, no. I mean, that's Degrassi just used the experience and just suckered him into a mistake. Did you hit something? Or is car okay? Uh, not really okay. Back oh, yeah. Gone. Hasn't got a back wing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's dragging along the ground behind. Knows that. Not that okay. Felix, there's a black orange flag for you. Black orange flag for you. Please pit. Felix just went in too hot, too tight, yeah. and too hot. Boom. White flag lap. Here we go. Jeb is there. Daniel Abdel breaks himself, gives away the podium, oh, or does he? His teammate Lucas oh. Degrassi gets through. <laughs> I was wondering whether he'd done it deliberately for Lucas Degrassi, but Tachita had podium. two cars on the podium. Victory in New York City for Sam Bird, the first man to win a race in the Big Apple. Yes, boys! Yeah! Amazing. Well done, boys. We did it. First win in New York. Big win for us. Big win, boys. The season hasn't gone our way, um, but that's just a win every year. So amazing. Um, so Richard, this is the first win that he's actually been here for. So thank you, Sir Richard. This one's for you and the Virgin team for working so hard. What a stunning opening race. Sam Bird will go down in history as the first ever man to win a motor race in New York City. And what a way to do it. With Sir Richard Branson watching on for the DS Virgin Racing Team. Now that's one way to impress the boss. But now let's have a look at when the God of Thunder landed in NYC to try his hand at electricity. Hammer time for Thor. This is quite some challenge. This is not easy. The walls get in the way of your vision. And they get in the way of your car if you suddenly run out of talent. Oh, and then a graphic indication as he got away with that. It's the first time I've done it, so it's my excuse for <laughs> all the mistakes I made. I was just happy I found reverse. It's fantastic. I've been to Formula One in, in Monaco, and um, obviously it sounds a lot different and feels a lot different, but just as impressive when you're watching these guys, you know, attracting the thing and as exhilarating and full of adrenaline. Sam Bird started round 10 with the same speed and passion that he ended the previous day with. He sat on pole while Lucas Degrassi again struggled to find championship winning speed in his quest to gain ground on Buemi. Degrassi qualified a ninth. And away they go for race two of the Qualcomm New York City e -Prix, and already drivers are mixing it up on the clean line. And you saw it right there exactly as yesterday. The guy in second position had a big advantage. We've seen a bit of a crash. You hear the carbon fiber breaking. That's the sound of dollar bills being set fire to. P1, P1. Okay. It looks like one of the Tachita cars is dragging bodywork. I think that might be Jean Eric Van. I believe it is. Jeb. He'll probably have to come in and have that replaced if he wants to actually have any kind of result in the race. Then he needs a safety car to get back in contention. Degrassi yeah, I mean, making the move. Yep. And Mauro Engel with that damaged rear end. He's got to come in. Oh, move from the Sam Bird. Sam oh, brave down the inside. Rosenquist will try the over under. Oh, oh he's going to be passed by his teammate. Is he? Oh, your teammate. Drag Nick race into felt. seven. <laughs> Let's see if Sam Bird can check out now. He's it's such confidence right now. Such confidence in the car and the team and certainly in his own abilities. Here he comes. Here he comes. Going longer. Great move down the inside. And that leaves Turvey still the stopper in the bottle for the queue in front. Antonio Felix da Costa in that Andretti car is coming on in a hurry. He's going to send him the dummy. No, but yeah, there's yep. a... Oh! oh, I mean, that was... Well, that was... Um, in yeah, elegant. Guys. Victory on day one and day two for Sam Bird, who sweeps New York. Yes! Come on! Excellent, Sam. Excellent stuff. And here come the Mahindra teammates. Gasly. Got Gasly. Gasly in the middle of it. In Gasly the into the fence. And again. I can't quite believe this weekend, yeah. Um, yeah, wow, wow. I mean, I'm in shock. Um, what a car they gave me. I mean, no, yeah. 
Well, after two electrifying races in New York, Sebastian Remy still led the Drivers' Championship, but Lucas Degrassi had closed the gap to just 10 points. Formula E's hotshot rookie Felix Rosenquist sat in third, and Sam Bird's double win meant he could still mathematically win the championship. And with a potential 58 points on offer in Montreal, it was going to be guaranteed drama as we headed into the final two races. First. Second. Defending champion. The main challenger, again. Oh, he hit it! I don't believe it! The two championship contenders out at turn one! I don't regret anything that I've done. With him, you never know what can happen. He has been the benchmark this year. Eight races, six wins. And it's another victory for Dominant Buemi. He's a very good driver, we know that. Oh, and there's an accident. Degrassi wins from the back in Mexico City. 12 Ypres wins. 21 podiums. Two races to go. The championship will be decided in Montreal. I blocked him on Twitter. He's desperate to win. He's not fully stable and he's feeling the pressure. Can I win? Of course I can. If you want my championship, you need to take it from me. And it all came down to this, the final two races of the season in Montreal. The return of the championship leader didn't start quite as he'd planned. Oh. He's in the wall! Oh. Sebastian wow. Buemi, championship leader, out of the second free practice session. That's a big one for Buemi. A crash in free practice meant Sebastian Buemi's car had to be rebuilt, therefore incurring a 10-place grid penalty. Consequently, Buemi would start in 12th. Degrassi took pole. All five lights are on, and we go green in Montreal, and it's a good start from Sarazan, but Degrassi comes over and covers it nicely. Not a very good start from Sebastian Buemi at all. Here comes Degrassi on the brakes into turn one, very late on the brakes from the Jaguars. They're trying to go either side of the cars in front, but Degrassi holds the lead. Buemi gets safely through the first corner. We're on board with him now, going side by side with the Andretti car of Antonio Felix da Costa on the run of into towards turn two. He's been passed by both Andrettis, gets a bash from this side, a bash from that side. He's dropping back and back and back down the order while Degrassi leads the race. And here's the look up Heidfeld up the inside. It's closing, closing, but he manages to get the job done. Ooh, late move from Heidfeld. Duval is closing in. What are oh. they doing? Round goes oh, low, Lord. Duval. Oh, look at that. Right the front, front right is done. That's just not on, really. Full course yellow, full course yellow. The pit lane's going to get busy. This is right in that window. Ale! Boemi shouting yes. Ale on the radio. That's maybe not cool. So yeah. in comes Daniel Apt. Got to be careful here for Boemi. Don't do an unsafe release. And here, oh, he's come out in Ooh, front of Daniel Apt now. Oh, and he's hit oh, him. Come on, Daniel, piles that's... straight into the back of Sebastian Buemi. What is going on here? Buemi gesticulates, and he is absolutely furious. Here's and Buemi. here comes Buemi up the inside of Mitch Evans, gets it done. So that's Buemi now up into sixth spot. There's a look up the inside from Daniel Apt, and he goes past Nico Prost. Buemi locks up. Is this going to be a chance for Apt coming into turn two? Buemi's all out of shape, but Apt isn't quite going to be close enough. Rosenquist has 3%. Oh, he's, oh, he's, hit he's hit the wall. wall. Look at the steering go off. It's done. The left rear, surely for Felix Rosenquist. You saw the back the steering. wobbling around. The, the steering's, steering's off as well. This Look is great for rear. Boemi. And there's Boemi right behind him. He's really crabbing down the road. Does he have a flat tyre? Boemi was seven points ahead coming into this race. If it finishes like this, he'll be six points behind. Here That's comes Boemi, Boemi on the inside and he's through into third place. But Sarazan's holding it on around the outside. Careful, and they make contact. Boemi's heading towards the barrier. Just about keeps it out. Now he's got the inside for the next corner. They touch. Sarazan almost goes into the wall. Now towards the final right-hander on the circuit. He's not quite able to do it. It's victory wow. for Lucas Degrassi. Hey, well done, Lucas. Nice. Fantastic drive from start to finish. It was uh, pretty tough with uh, all the pressure, but uh, we managed to, to go through the race. And uh, of course, the safety car didn't help us. But in the end, we managed to keep uh, Jeff behind. We were extremely quick. And we did the job. So um, day one, it's done. Uh, now <laughs> it's another day. That was a, a cracking drive under immense pressure. A really good day, a good event for him. Whilst Degrassi celebrated, Buemi remonstrated. Give a big margin, 
then why you, you have to hit people? Hit margin. I don't hit people. Yeah, well, then you hit me, man. No, I don't hit anyone. Yeah, yeah, you hit me. I had a choice your... to make: hit you or die. It's your choice. Yeah, then you, you hit it. me. You hit you hit me okay, by dying. Next, next time I break your railway, all right? And you hit me, big time. You have to answer for this one. What? I said to me, of course. Yeah, man. Of course. Dirty, man. Dirty. And the pressure would continue to mount on Buemi when he was disqualified for his car being underweight. Again, the championship would be decided by the final race. Having led the whole series, Buemi went into round 12, trailing Degrassi by 18 points. Another mistake in qualifying left Buemi 13th, with his rival Degrassi in fifth. Buemi had a mountain to climb. Felix Rosenquist started on pole for the third time this season. All five lights are on and we go green in Montreal and it's a good start from Jean-Éric Verne. Rosenquist has got away well. Verne's going to try and go side by side with Sam Bird on the run down towards turn one. Degrassi's looking towards the inside of Nick Heidfeld. Big lock up from Tom Dillman. Is everybody going to get safely through a spin? Round, round, round goes the Tachita car. Everybody takes evasive action. It's Stefan Sarazan who's been rotated at the first corner. Buemi's got damaged he's on the rear hit. of his car. The side pod is wiggling and he's trying to wiggle it off, I think, or see if he's got any damage to the rear. And he's getting overtaken here. Up the inside goes Loic Duval. Is that suspension broken on Buemi? Is this going to be the end of his championship no, challenge? And he's been given a black flag with an orange disc, which means you need to sort out the damage on your car. Jerome D'Ambrosio swerving around trying to attack Daniel Apt on the run into the left-hander of three. That's going to be a brave one from D'Ambrosio round the outside. What a move from the Belgian. Into the pits comes Sebastian Buemi and that effectively ends, if not officially, surely his championship chance. And he is furious. And uh, look how much defensive Heidfeld's having to go. Bird looks to the inside, not quite close enough. Lopez in the other DS Virgin car, and he's gone in too deep. And Lopez <laughs> cuts back underneath Tom Dillman. He moves up a place. Now, Nick Heidfeld look will Bird. look in his mirrors and see a swarm of DS Virgin Here cars behind him. Covers the inside line. Bird tries to go Whoa. late, late, late around the outside. Is he going to get it stopped? Yes, what a move from Sam Bird. Apt has got in front of Lucas Degrassi there, and they're going oh. side by side at PK, pushing Degrassi. There's no love lost between these two, and Degrassi holds on for the time being. Here comes the move no, around the outside no, for Degrassi. No, 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 just, just don't do that oh. outside. That's high risk stuff. <laughs> doesn't need to do that. And there's jean eric Verne in the lead of the race. Here we go. Here we this is how he did it. Out of Ooh. turn two up to three. He's way a bit a way back, isn't he? Yeah, wow, out of nowhere. Here comes Jean-Éric Verne into the bus stop chicane for the final time. The Frenchman joined the Formula E series in its third race. He took pole position in its first race in 2014, but it's taken him till now to take victory in Formula E, and he wins in Montreal. Wonderful performance from Verne and the Tatita team. But Lucas Degrassi is the Formula E champion. Lucas, you are 2017 Formula E Drivers champion, well done, brilliant. Lucas, we did it, we did it after three years. Really good, I'm so proud about you. Great job, great job team! We are the champions! Woo! So happy. And finally, a first ever Formula E win for Jean-Eric Verne. But the real winner was Lucas de Grassi. He was third in season one, second in season two, but it was third time lucky as the Brazilian claimed Formula E's ultimate prize, beating Sebastian Wemi by 24 points to win the season three Drivers' Championship. It feels so good. I, I'm losing my voice already. And we're just starting to party. Uh, so much sacrifices. I did Berlin two races with a broken leg. Then I uh, had to do a last minute surgery to be fit for New York. Everything counts. You did a fantastic job this weekend. I'm so happy. So, final confirmation Degrassi wins the championship with 181 points, Buemi second with 157, and a fantastic debut season for Felix Rosenquist saw him finish third on 127. In the Constructors, Renault Edams picked up their third consecutive title, fending off the Ab Schaffler Audi sports team by 20 points. 
and a much improved Mahindra Racing made up the top three. We had a lot of doubters. For me, it was uh, very clear that the championship was going to succeed, and that's why I put my name and, and my effort behind the championship. It's been an incredible year, you know, the championship goes from strength to strength. There's so many highlights of Formula E, you can hardly say that, that there was a race weekend you didn't enjoy. The start of the season, I always had in mind, I'm going to miss New York, so I need to score points. Bravo, bravo. And there's your winner. From BA, we really came back stronger, and as a brand new team. Mitch oh, Evans oh, oh. on the attack. Buenos Aires, we were fighting for, for top five. What was that for me? My highlight was Mexico. It was actually one of my best drives of my career. The race in itself was crazy mayhem. He got the chicane. And the two teammates hit each other. Such a show on the podium, that was just amazing. Monaco, for example, was a bit of a surprise finishing fourth. It was still a hard one because I had to hold people behind me for a long time. Oh. PK still there for oh. Oh. What the f is wrong with him? Berlin was a highlight. Done a good race there. Uh, and obviously home crowd is good. Daniel App goes by for fifth. Two wins in New York was phenomenal. I didn't realize it was going to be that dominant. Sam Bird sweeps New York. Come on! Seb did a fantastic championship. I was just scoring whenever I could. Plus, on the fact that he didn't do New York, that was what brought us to a, a title fight again. And we go green in Montreal, and it's a good start. Sarazan's holding it on around the outside. Careful. And then we contact. It's victory wow. for Lucas Degrassi. Buemi's got damaged He's on the rear hit. of his car. Lucas Degrassi is the Formula E champion. Another fantastic season for Formula E. And we keep growing, we keep moving forward. We've had great news lately, like Mercedes and Porsche announcing that they're coming into the championship. The world is going electric, that's what we want. The new season kicks off in Hong Kong in December, and with new venues already confirmed for the coming year, Formula E's global expansion continues.